we're going to start with Visual Studio and we're going to open up a new project and the project type we're going to create will be a Blazor server app and we're going to call it Blazor Chat GPT plugin and we'll go ahead and click next we'll go ahead and click create this will create the project and we'll right click on the project and we'll select manage NuGet packages and we're going to install three NuGet packages the first one is the open API package go ahead and click install and then we'll say OK and then we'll also accept the license agreement the next NuGet package we'll install will be the swashbuckle NuGet package go ahead and click install click OK and then also accept the license and the final NuGet package will be the swashbuckle annotations and again we'll click install and we'll accept the license agreement the next step is to open up the program.cs file and we'll first add the course policy to allow the open AP AI API to call into our project and then we'll next add controllers next we'll add the code for the swagger generation now we will disable the HTTPS redirection and that is because when debugging with OpenAI on localhost it can't use HTTPS and we don't want the redirection to happen we're going to add um, mapping controllers we're going to then add uh, to invoke our course policy that we defined earlier we're then going to use static files so that we can return this well-known file that OpenAPI will call will also then enable Swagger and Swagger UI. We're going to go ahead and save everything and we'll close the program.cs file. So now we're going to add the controller methods that OpenAI will call to invoke our plugin. We're going to first create a folder called controllers and we're going to right click on this folder select add and we're going to then select class and the class that we're going to create will be called to do's controller go ahead and add that we'll first put in the basic scaffolding which will have our to do request uh, objects and we'll first have a collection to hold the to do's we'll add a method to add to do items we're then going to add a method that will get the existing to do items and finally we will add a method to allow a to do item to be deleted we're now going to add a new folder to the project and this folder will be called dot well hyphen known this is what OpenAI will look for when registering our plugin we need an icon that will also display so we're going to copy the favicon PNG into that folder and we're now going to right click on the folder select new item and we're going to add a file called ai-plugin.json again this is what OpenAI will look for when invoking our plugin we'll then put in the JSON schema that it will look for however we need to make sure that the port is going to match what our project is so we look in the launch settings JSON and copy the port and then put it into the URL and then again we're going to save everything 
this point our plugin code is complete so to make sure everything is correct we're going to rebuild and I'm going to pull this up here so that we can see that it builds correctly and we see that it has been built correctly now we need to make sure we're using HTTP so we'll select that and hit the button to run the project using HTTP and the web browser will open we can go to the Swagger endpoint and this will allow us to see our controller methods however OpenAI will actually be looking for a Swagger YAML file and we can go there and this is how OpenAI will know what methods our plugin exposes. Now we're ready to head on over to OpenAI and we'll go to the plugin store and we'll select develop your own plugin and we'll put in our website on localhost and we will then install the plugin. At this point we want to make sure that the checkbox next to the plugin is enabled and we can go into our controller file and we can set a breakpoint. So at this point we're going to set a breakpoint in the add to do item method and when we switch back over to OpenAI and we say add two new to do items step one and step two when we click the button to invoke it we'll see that our breakpoint will be hit and we can see that the request has come in first of course to add step one so the collection has one item which is step one we'll go ahead and continue and then we see it makes another call and this time it's adding step two so we'll go ahead and continue and of course it says it's added step one and step two we can also see the various calls and what it passed so now let's do something a little more complex where we add, ask it to remove step one and then to list the remaining items so at this point we expect to only have step two so when we click the button it of course calls our controller and it first gets all the to-do items which of course have step one and step two we'll let it continue we see that it makes another call this time it wants to remove an item so we see that the delete method was called and it's deleting um, index 0 which of course is the first one which of course when we check the collection only leaves step 2 because step 1 has been removed from the collection and then of course it makes another call where it's trying to see what's left at this point we see that step 2 is what's left go ahead and continue and then 